Now for what's trending in true crime, a teenager and her unborn baby are dead, and police allege it was at the hands of her ex-boyfriend. When Mia Campos left home on July 14th and didn't come back, her family went looking for her, and they found her dead about a mile away in a wooded area in Loganville, Georgia. Police say the cause of death was asphyxiation. Campos's ex-boyfriend, Jesus Monroy, was taken into custody two days later, accused of lying to police at that point. But now he's charged with malice murder, felony murder, feticide, and aggravated assault. The victim's family says that Monroy was the father of Mia's baby. So this morning we're asking, where does this investigation go now? We got a tremendous power panel standing by. I want to bring them in now. I want to welcome in retired NYPD detective and professor Mike Alcazar. And still with me, criminal defense and civil rights attorney Casey Early and criminal defense and former prosecutor Franz Borkhard. Detective Alcazar, uh, talk to us here, please. Would you start off the conversation uh, regarding where this investigation goes now? Well, they're processing the crime scene. They recovered, I'm sure, uh, a lot of evidence, DNA evidence, uh, and they have the perpetrator. So they're processing all that information. They might have canvassed for video surveillance. And again, they're waiting for the DNA result to come back. Were there any defensive wounds? Were there any exchange of DNA between the, the victim and uh, the suspect? So it's a meticulous process, and it's going to be... Uh, you know, they're doing their best. They're doing their due diligence. I noticed they didn't uh, release the cause of death immediately. So they wanted to ensure that they had the suspect. And they're also ruling out there any other suspects. So again, the, uh, the investigation is ongoing. Oh, appreciate that. Any other suspects? Could anyone else uh, have participated in this? Uh, really appreciate that, Detective. Uh, you know, um, as you were talking, you kept having me think here how back to it was Mr. Monroy who was helping the family look for her. You know, he had communicated the night before. Uh, Casey, uh, your thoughts on that, too, how, how that uh, may or may not have influenced where police went with this? Yeah. It was kind of weird because there were also reports that she left the night before with an unknown individual. So it wasn't an unknown male. Who was this person that she left out with and what connection does he have with her? Um, at first glance, you would think that it was the ex-boyfriend, but of course he was only arrested for providing false information. But it's it's really a mystery at this point. So as my colleague stated, the investigation is ongoing and maybe they need to talk to or find out who this person is, what was their motive, because it, it's just a tragedy. It's not just this life loss, but of course the unborn child. Right. Casey, thank you so much for bringing that up. Uh, for folks who've been looking for information on this, as I have, I've seen conflicting reports on that. I'm so glad you said that we were talking about it, uh, my team and I, this morning before the show, because there were some of us who saw that there was reporting locally. You know, this is in the greater Atlanta area that said yeah. that this was an unknown person to her family, and then some conflicting reporting that said it was Mr. Monroy uh, who was the person. And so uh, you're right, there's a big question there. Uh, it goes back to what detectives said as well. Is there another person who, who potentially was involved here? Uh, Franz, to you, uh, next please, last but certainly not least, uh, your thoughts on what other questions need to be answered with this investigation? Well, so first and foremost, I would agree. Was he acting alone? Was there somebody else? Um, I, you know, I want to know motive. I want to have a, a I'm, it's a package, right? The, 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 the police and, and the prosecutors are going to build a package to present to the grand jury at some point. And so the, the tighter that package can be, the more solid it can be, uh, the better they can build a case that ultimately can get them to the finish line. So I want to know that we have the right person and I want to know that we have all the right persons uh, before they move forward. And I really would like them to stop giving conflicting media information. I think that hurts the case and it hurts the victims as well. Yeah, you're really right about that, Franz. It does um, streamline the information. You know, perhaps it's it's one source it, putting it all out there, making sure it's accurate. Uh, great points, and I'm glad you brought up the family, Franz, because that's where we want to go next in this discussion. It was Mia Campos's family who used a phone app to find her, and Court TV's Barbara McDonald visited the crime scene. Take a look.
I'm in Loganville, Georgia, at the corner of Stevens Road and Rosebud Road. It's a pretty busy intersection, and right here on this corner is this patch of woods with a little trail that is fairly worn and comes right back in here into some pretty thick woods. A lot of plant life. And right over here is where the body of Mia Campos was found at one o'clock in the morning, hours after she had gone missing. And there's more. Our Court TV team is going back to talk with Mia Campos's family today. So our next question for our power panel, what would you want to ask the family? Let's bring them back in. Casey Afranz and Detective Mike Alcazar. A uh, detective, let me go back to you. Uh, what are you most interested to know from Mia's family? I would like to know like the history of the relationship. Um, uh, did they have a lot of fights? Did she have a, a new boyfriend? Uh, is there anybody else that we should look into? Um, also, looking at that 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 crime scene, I w I'm curious. Also, did she in fact uh, get killed in that crime scene, or was she transported from somewhere else? So, yeah, there's a lot of things to to think about during this investigation. Mm -hmm. Uh, transportation that's interesting if that was where she died where that memorial is uh, thank you for that Casey uh, to you next please what would you want to know I would ask how was the ex-boyfriend's personality because he was with them uh, during the time that she was missing I believe there were some reports that he assisted uh, looking for her so was his personality dramatically different from what they were used to I mean he was the ex-boyfriend and uh, is there, are there any other clues that they could have picked up on that may be helpful to this investigation? Um, and also, do they know any other person, any male that she was speaking to, any names that uh, came up? Because this unknown individual needs to be identified quickly so he can either be ruled a suspect or be ruled out. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that, Casey. As you were talking, I'm thinking about how she was over seven months along in her pregnancy. We know he's the baby's father, but he's been referred to as an ex-boyfriend. So it makes you wonder, was someone else in the picture, was there any jealousy that could serve as motivation uh, if the ex uh, allegedly did this, as police say? Uh, Franz, would you take us home, please, on the conversation? What questions would you have for the family? Well, like Casey has said, I, I want to know the red flags. What red flags did they know about? Did they see? Did they suspect? I also want to know about normal versus abnormal behavior. Is this a place that she would have gone to normally? Is this a place that she's never gone to? I want to know what is a deviation from normal and what would have been normal with for her. Any information that family can give law enforcement assist them in the process, right? Um, but there are also wealth of information possibly about the ex-boyfriend slash father of the child slash possible suspect, you know, so so anything they can give about him is, is extra helpful. Most definitely. Uh, Franz, appreciate that. Uh, this has been a great discussion with you all. Uh, big thanks to Detective Mike Alcazar, attorneys Casey Early and Franz Borkhard. We need to let you all go. Get on with your days, uh, but we'll see you back here soon, I'm sure. And again, our team is interviewing Mia Campos's family today, and you're going to see the interview tomorrow right here on Opening Statements.